There are more and more electric vehicles on the market, but one of them has been here for quite some time, the Nissan Leaf. Meanwhile, in the second generation, it's not the newest EV out there, for sure not, but still a quite decent price. Also updated as for the range and the battery and so on. And we have asked ourselves, what about the Nissan Leaf here with the new competition? Is it still making sense to buy one? Exterior, interior and a driving experience? here on our channel in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front we can see a friendly face and here the unit there leads over to the headlamps, standard with halogen still in lowest trims, but then middle higher trims always get then the LED and also a nice daytime running light right here. A striking blue, Thomas blue color for today. And remember this area here in the middle part because this one will fold up for the charging ports. Wow, that blue really comes out well in the sun, doesn't it? Length, 4 meters 49, 177 inches. Let's see the Nissan Leaf E+. Plus. And the wheels come either 16 inch steel, then 16 inch aluminum, or here the optional 17 inch aluminum with the best look and still some aerodynamic design. Black mirror caps and also black roof as a contrast to the blue color. Wow. Really nice reflections here at the dropping line as well. And then a special element here in the rear part that makes the roof even more contrastish to the blue color. In the rear, the design of the tail limbs worked out quite nicely, I think. But then here, this area is very, very bulky and it's not used for trunk space or something. So I wonder what they did there design-wise. But more than definitely with this black area in the you know, in the central part right here. Interesting that, by the way, in this driving review, we will also do a high-speed test and put it to the maximum speed on the German motorway. So there are two versions available, 40 kilowatt hour battery with 150 horsepower, or the bigger one here today, 62 kilowatt hours gross with 217 horsepower. 6.9 seconds is then the acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And the official range, 385 kilometers or 240 miles. However, if you, you know, use it also in cold temperatures or drive it a little bit faster time to time, realistic is 330 kilometers or somewhat 200 miles plus. And then about recharging, so you can open it from the inside of the car or then here also holding the key, this lower button, then this charging flap opens and then on the left side you have the DC charging 50 kilowatt max Chidemo standard and on the right side the AC max 6.6 .6 kilowatt. This is the car key, simple but works. Keyless entry here with this button and door closing sound. Yeah, satisfying. Then inside of the doors, hard pack here on top part, but then this is soft touch. Small door pockets, optional Bose sound system here today. Then a rather modern steering wheel and the seats. They are here optional. Some microfiber inserts here, but then this is indeed animal skin, of course, not making sense for a sustainable electric vehicle. But usually the standard seat would just be fabric, and there's also a mix of fabric inside and some leatherette inserts on the outside available. So both is possible. So most Leaf will drive with black fabric seats. And they're also a little bit better in the comfort and also in the climate comfort, both summer and winter times. Getting inside is normal compact hatch style. So seating position is somewhat okay. The fabric surface will deliver you a little bit more comfort, but you know, it's not laid out for the tallest person as for the seating position, I feel, but it's also not uncomfortable. Here, headroom, 
So yeah, it's all the way down. With one meter 86 or 601, still okay. The biggest weakness of this car overall, I think, is really this here. You cannot pull the steering wheel towards you. You can just pull it up and down and that's it. And so the seating position here, I mean, I usually put the steering wheel all the way towards me and then maybe go back with the seat and so on. This is really, you know, something that is reducing the comfort big time. Interior overview is rather simple. Let's take it that way. Here, the soft touch material with the blue constant stitch. That's quite nice. This is here, hard pack. Steam wheel, once again, um, you know, it's good to control. It's compact size, also has a sporty style indeed. Uh, but here, once again, here, you cannot pull it towards you just up and down. And that is really hindering the driving. Zoom onto the instruments and the infotainment system, seven inch right here. Already one thing that you can easily tune the brightness here. That's actually a quite nice thing. Then lower part, also more deals, normal climate unit, seat heating and so on here in the lower part, shifting mode, controlled right here. But again, I'll show you that all in detail very soon. This is a decor element, but also right, you know, rather plain. So the build quality, definitely not the strength of this car. Then here, the infotainment system, the software looks really outdated. Camera right here. This resolution is actually quite okay. You also have the fake drone view from above right there. And most important thing then probably will be using the Apple CarPlay where the integration is actually quite decent right here. And let's just check out the music. I mean, sound is quite okay. Optional sound system installed here, but yeah, also not the best one we have heard. It's, you know, like a lot of things about this vehicle, mediocre in a lot of ways, always keeping the price in mind. These are the instruments, right side analog, left side digital, and then you can have a digital speed, for example, or assistance systems change. And yeah, these lane keeping warners, for example, I usually have them deactivated because they're really, really annoying. And then here, for example, you can also deactivate or activate the steering assist in that menu right here. Other than that, you can also, for example, get here the consumption figures. And all of this you control here with the left side of the steering wheel. Whereas the right side, you activate the cruise control here, the adaptive cruise control. Climate unity in the lower part is easy to access while driving. This is here the separate heater when the heating is directly taken from the battery, of course, drains range, but at some point in winter time, you do need that. In the lower area here, you start the car, this is the smartphone connection, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and also for the seat heating next to 12 volt power supply. And this is quite interesting here, the shifting lever, this is reverse, this is D mode, and then this is B mode. B mode, a little bit more recuperation, and even more recuperation here, with this toggle switch here with the e-pedal and then you basically do not need the brake at all unless there's really emergency braking and you can also set it in the digital instruments that it keeps the setting you know so when you activate the e-pedal that it stays in this activated e-pedal mode that you don't have to activate it over and over again then cup holders not adaptive here this armrest could be better attached and then some space underneath and here left next to the steering wheel you can activate the steering wheel heating nice then here you unlock the charging port and here for example this eco button this is interesting because it reduces the throttle input while driving i think it's actually quite a helpful feature because the car has enough power and wheel spin could be a problem when you really floor it however it's really just about you know when you press the throttle you know, at the same stage with the eco mode, it takes less acceleration and without the eco mode, it would take more acceleration in this very same throttle angle. Rear seating, of course, also simple materials here at the rear doors. And then when I have the seat as I would be driving, yeah, I have to be careful here um, not to hit my head. And you see it does fit for tall adults also when the tall adult is driving. Also headroom wise, it exactly fits, but nothing more. And you also, you see here how how high my knees are in comparison to the front seat. So somewhat an awkward seating position here for tall adults in the rear, but you can live with it. So it's not the worst, but definitely not a really spacious area. Then 
isofix here at the outsides each. In the middle part you have some USB chargers and also heating for the seats that's possible. And this middle tunnel is just somewhat strange than for an electric vehicle. The trunk capacity is 420 liters and see they do not put a cover here in the lower part that they can use all the space also in the height. But then of course here in the folder seats you have this step here, cabin trolley on the inside. Well the normal cable is just here. You can also store it in this bag but electric vehicle users know that yeah at some point when you recharge quite frequently with these cables you don't store in that well again. So normal length here is about 80 centimeters. The total length when the seats fold to the front seats is one meters, yeah one meters 57 and the height then here to the cover this is here about 60 centimeters again because there's no floor but then you also have this rather big entry sill. Well, Kevin Thomas is driving lounge with the Nissan Leaf E Plus. So the 62 kilowatt hour gross battery and the strong electric motor as well. And let me begin with that exact range once again. So the maximum range you can score when you're driving primarily slow city traffic and so on is about 380 kilometers or 240 miles with that bigger battery pack. And when you then drive also maybe a little bit of motorway at subtle speed and so on so a little bit more high speed driving or higher speed driving then you rather score some consumption figures of about 17 kilowatt hours on one kilometers or 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles and that then means that the range rather goes towards 330 kilometers or 200 miles plus just to be you know safe that you really know what you can always go unless you go like maximum speed on the motorway then of course it's more it's, it's the same actually with petrol engines double the um, the energy use approximately like this but indeed the um, electric vehicles they drain even more when they drive them you know at, at the really really high speeds but that's also not what this car is laid out to be, more here in the city traffic. And let's begin with some of the features. Steering actually conveys a quite good feeling. There's no dead zone area. It's easy to steer it, but it doesn't feel unnatural. So I think steering feeling wise, it did a good job. Suspension wise, we are not the biggest fan of that. We do have the optional 17 inch wheels here. They of course look cooler with that vehicle. I have to say that the looks of this vehicle is not the primary focus as either. So maybe I would even stick with the 16 inch ones to make the ride more comfortable because I'm really not so, uh, satisfied with the suspension when we're going over some bumps here like sewage systems, covers and so on. Mm, it gets quite rough. So suspension to me one of the biggest weaknesses of this vehicle. As for the seating position here, mm, yeah it's somewhat okay but also not the best one I've experienced when you do have the fabric seats which are standard and then they're also a little bit more comfortable because the fabric surface adapts to the body a little bit more. Also noise insulation wise here at lower speeds you maybe hear that also due to the rather you know, stiffer and rattling suspension we also have some um, noises here on the interior from time to time. However if you compare it to the previous generation has of course been improved. Um, I mean, it's, it's actually quite fun to drive the vehicle. The electric boost is always there. You always have that torque quite ready. Different recuperations modes. Usually you would leave it in the e-pedal mode. Here that means I lift my foot off the throttle. The car is decelerating instantaneously. You can activate or deactivate the e-pedal mode in the lower console. It was um, only recently introduced for the Leaf. Then you here leave the throttle and then the car is rolling if you have that off and you have the normal D driving mode. There is also the, the B driving mode. This is then also giving a little bit more recuperation. So acceleration now, 45 kilometers, 40 kilometers. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> 80, that was already 88. So really quick. So, and you, you may be not sure if you heard or seen, there was a little bit a little bit of gravel on the ground, but still that's a, some kind of a problem here. The tires don't really catch up with the um, 
you know, with the power on the front wheels. So indeed, we did have some front wheel spin right here. So, I mean, in most of the situations, you rather try to keep it a little bit more subtle. But then again, yeah, really interesting, good power here. You wouldn't expect it from the looks of the vehicle, but that's the thing with the electric vehicle. They are always somewhat sporty because the torque immediately sets in. When you turn on the heater, by the way, immediately drops down about 11 kilometers in the, in the range because then the heating is directly taking you know, electricity from the battery. With the heat pump that comes um, in uh, mid-trim levels, uh, this effect is reduced, so it reduces the effect that the range is drained in winter time, especially when you use the heating. That's of course good that they have the heat pump right here. There's also blind spot monitor active. Let's show you that. Probably someone will overtake us here now. There we go. So now the car will appear and in the moment it is in the blind spot, there's then a small dot in the side mirror. So it's not working in advance, but really just in that very moment. Cruise control set here on the right side of the steering wheel with your thumb and it's also keeping the distance to the car in front of you. That's also active. Then also active lane keeping assist is active here, but uh, you can see it's a little bit nervous going left and right. It's somewhat keeping the lane centralized. Yes, that works well. Um, yeah, but you feel the intervention is not the smoothest process. But for longer motorway rides, it can also be quite comfortable just to use that. So here now it's actually quite well done. Adaptive cruise control is reducing the speed here. I'm overtaking that truck. There we go. Le uh, noise insulation here at 1 km an hour, 60 miles an hour is just somewhat okay, not really good. Again, you feel that the car is not really laid out to be driven at these higher speeds. Definitely feel that. So now I'm going down here, you see difference D mode, some recuperation. I put in the B mode, more recuperation. So this is the difference between D and B mode and the E pedal mode, even more recuperation, even stronger. And then you basically just use the acceleration pedal for that one pedal feeling. And now we'll show you one big acceleration. So we put it, see here, 40 kilometers an hour. This car pass, these two cars, oh, they are driving very close. What the hell are they doing? So now 30 kilometers an hour to, let's see. Hundred. 140 kilometers an hour. Really nice acceleration. And now the top speed. Whoa. Is that even true? Goes 165 kilometers an hour. That's a little bit more than I would have expected. And you hear that noise insulation, of course, not the most ideal one. It's quite noisy now in here. And then also in this moment when I'm driving the maximum speed, um, also the you know the energy consumption of course goes all the way up. Let's see, I'll zero it out. I can also give you a figure. However, I feel quite stable for the vehicle here. Let's do lane change high speed. Yeah, it's starting to swim a little bit, but we also have wind tires mounted, so that's the thing. And now then with the e-pedal mode, let's go off throttle. Let's see how the recuperation. Yeah, it's not that strong then. At the higher speeds, we also have to use the brakes right now. Yeah, got to use the brakes with that one alongside. Wow. But that that acceleration was really impressive. Yeah, now about 27 kilowatt hours on one kilometers. So that's on one kilometers. So that's um, it's not exactly double the energy consumption, but of course significantly more. So driving the car at high speed won't be such a good idea. But overall, I really have to say, I mean, yeah, suspension is a big weak, uh, you know, big weakness with this vehicle. To me, still the biggest weakness while driving is that you cannot put the steering wheel further towards you. That's a big weakness, definitely. Noise insulation, it's not the best. However, the efficiency and the projected range when you don't floor it out all the way. That's actually quite reliable. And that again brings me to the initial point, you know. Yeah, the newer EVs 
they're probably better in a lot of respects here than the Nissan Leaf. But when you once again think about the price performance ratio, then the Leaf still plays a role. And now to our conclusion for today with the Nissan LEAF E+. Exterior-wise, it's rather standard compact vehicle, nothing too fancy. Interior-wise, not the best build quality, but at least somewhat straightforward user interface. The infotainment system, quite updated, but most of the time you would probably just use the smartphone connection. And for the space that is being offered, it's not the most comfortable car either. On the rear, it does fit also with tall L's, but barely. And the trunk also not well used but still you can fit a lot of things in there most of the things we, we can examine are rather mediocre not really standing out but also not too bad that's the scheme about this vehicle driving also quite decent again nothing special suspension is somewhat a little bit rough however there's a good acceleration forward definitely that's a lot of fun and steering input is also quite nice and also the projected range was a f rather fulfilled, so it's also rather an efficient vehicle, especially when you also have the heat pump, which is included in the most models, unless you really floor it out on the motorway, but that's this thing with all electric vehicles. So overall, I think, you know, it's not a standing out vehicle, it has never been like that, but it has been very successful because for the price, you get a very decent range and that's still the case and if you then compare the new competitors they are actually better in most ways driving dynamics interior build quality styling maybe space that is being offered and so on the nissan leaf cannot you know stand out with these points but then again if you take a look at what you get from the you know from the battery or for the range for that price then the Nissan Leaf is still somewhat attractive, so you would go for that if you don't expect too much actually, but want a rather cheap electric vehicle, which is still good in the price performance ratio. My biggest concern is really the steering wheel that you cannot put towards you just up and down. That's one of the biggest flaws of this vehicle. If they would fix that, that would be already quite something. It's not too expensive to fix that actually. So what are your thoughts to the Nissan Leaf here in this version? At least some Thomas Blue color here for me today. That was rather pleasing. So, thank you so much for tuning in today. Also, tune in to more electric vehicle reviews here.